What is going on, guys? Joey Franzo here with Flex Training Systems. And today, I'm going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot lately. If you guys hear an air compressor thingy in the background, please try to ignore it. But it might be going off uh, a couple times during this video. It won't be too bad. That being said, a lot of people have been asking me about kilos uh, versus pounds. And I'm here to just kind of talk about like if it matters... Who should care about this? Who needs to pay attention to this? Um, and just kind of break it down. So pounds versus kilos. Um, I don't know why this is coming up a lot. Uh, probably because there aren't really any super serious meets that the most popular lifter, so most of social media, is going to be looking at at the moment. So you're going to see a lot of lifters kind of using whatever they want, right? They're going to use pounds. They're going to use, uh, I mean, in particular, you guys have seen Russ, Keiko, Jesus, um, <clears throat> just kind of mess with uh, pounds. I'm sure there's more. But so people are asking me, like, Joy, like, wh why are they doing that? Is there a specific reason? Um, the short answer is no, there's not really a specific reason. Uh, we don't have a meet for a long time in, in that context of my lifters. And right now is off season. If they want to mess around with pounds, I don't really know that. But you, what you, people need to understand is that if you're looking at somebody lift on the internet, you have to, like, if they're a very seasoned lifter that has competed many times with the same coach who's going to guide them and help them be very consistent on meet day, that, that, that might not be your situation. You know what I'm saying? And if that is the case, then you need to think about, okay, should you be using pounds? Um, there are some things that, that come with Using non-specific competition equipment um, that will probably really mess you up and also probably won't even matter at all. So, for example, if you train at a commercial gym on a commercial gym bar and bumper plates, like big fat bumper plates, and then you go to a meet and you use an illegal bar with kilos, that is going to be a very, very different outcome. Like, especially, like, all of your lifts are going to be very different. Bench will probably be the least affected, but... You know, if you're a new lifter and you're like, oh, I'm just like lifting these weights in the gym and then you go to a meet and you're on kilos and you get stapled or something, I mean, you kind of set yourself up for that. You know what I mean? Um, I would say if you're an experienced lifter that's proven themselves time and time again, it does not matter that much. For me personally, when I competed at my last two Arnold's, three Arnold's, every meet, I've not always had access to kilos. I've only usually done them about a month out to kind of see where I'm at right? Because the pounds are going to move a little bit different. Um, and if you understand the differences on the equipment that you're using versus what you're going to use in the competition, it's not a big deal. You can make the adjustment on meet day and you're going to be okay. A lot of the way that I train my lifters and the way that I train myself is like, I'm always taking what I have based on the circumstances and the situation in front of me. And if you have that in the back of your mind, then when meet day comes around, you're going you're gonna to make the adjustment based on what's happening. You're not going to be set on numbers. You're not going to be married to numbers. You're going to be like, okay, well, I did hit this in the gym on pounds, on an OPB, um, and on meet day, I'm on an Alico, da, da, da. I might have to lower my deadlift a little bit because the bar's not going to bend as much, okay? Everybody's different. Um, me, personally, I'm always looking for that, and I'm, and I'm like, it's almost like it's a clean slate. Like, we have our opener, and then we're just kind of going from there, right? We have a plan um of of where we kind of want to be at the end of the day um but i mean you gotta you have to adapt you, you might get bad judging you might have a long hold on bench depth might be crazy like it, it just has to do with you know adjusting on the day and understanding that there's going to be a difference probably possibly between the two for me personally i thought i did my whole prep on pounds and then maybe occasionally i'll throw in a couple of kilo days just kind of see how the, the difference is. You know, if like in one eight-week period, I hit a top single, on, it's like 725 on, on pounds. And then another eight-week period, I hit a top single and it's, or let's say it's 750 and then the next eight weeks, it's like 722. Okay, I know there's a bit of a difference there. I can't, you know, I'll, I'll try to hit my 750 in the meat, um, but I was only able to take 722. Then you factor in the taper, you factor in your in a caloric surplus and you're probably going to be somewhere in that range, right? This is all about setting yourself up for success and seeing where you're going to be based on, you know, what you've done in the gym, what kind of equipment were you using and being honest with yourself. I think that's a huge thing, right? There's not like a super advantage to using one over the other. Um, 
You could argue that for some smaller lifters, getting used to pounds might help because you're going to have to control it a lot more. But at the same time, it could also be a limiting factor and uh, prevent you from actually being able to display your strength because you're so worried about stability and controlling the weight as opposed to, you know, lifting what you can actually lift um, on the proper equipment. If you, again, so I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, if you're an older lifter and you've been doing this a long time and you have and you're more experienced, it doesn't really matter that much because you're going to be able to make the adjustment on the day. If you're a newer lifter, um, you I mean, and you just marry to your numbers in the gym and you're trying to prove your shit, prove yourself to the world. You're probably, I mean, you might get humbled on meat day, and that's just an unfortunate thing that you're going to have to deal with. Um, you know, new, uh, what else? What else? Consistency is key. So for example, if you train on pounds in an OPB, but you're very consistent with it and you can get an accurate measurement of improvement from week to week, um, I think you're going to be pretty solid when meet day comes. Uh, you just have to make the adjustment up or down 10 kilos, five kilos, whatever it is based on, you know, if it's an OPB, if it's a Lico or whatever. Um, and if you can do that and be honest with yourself, I think you're going to be fine. Uh, you don't want the physics, physics of the bar to mess you up. And that's something that, that's why I always tell my lifters, like I have a couple um, just like newer girls right now and I'm telling them like, hey, if you can, maybe like four weeks out, three weeks out, two weeks out, whatever, let's get some practice on the kilos because, you know, I mean, uh, also you're going to probably lift better on the kilos, right? You're just going to be more, especially smaller lifters, you're going to be more controlled. You're going to have a better understanding of what you need, sorry, what you need to do. And, and, and like, <clears throat> I have this one girl, she went to, she got, she went to a completely different gym. She was training on a commercial gym with like big fat, um, <coughs> they're like these plastic, plastic pound plates. And like, it just, it would really make her squat a lot harder to, to manage. Right. It, it, it would just like, I, I could tell like that was really her limiting factor. Like when she got above 300 pounds, it was like very hard to get over that. And there were just a little, just a little bit more aches and pains than we really needed to deal with. Um, but then once we got to a gym with competition equipment and a comp bar and things like that, everything started to pop off and it was just like much better. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons for using good equipment. Uh, again, you want to focus on moving the weight and the comp specificity is always going to be king. But um, again, I'm going to use Russ as an example here, right? He just made a, a, a little TikTok about, you know, people saying like, oh, that is his training squat high. I think it was like 725 or something or 675 for four. And he was on pounds. Now he's already done all those weights on kilos. He's actually done more than that on kilos. He's done set, uh, 683 for a set of four, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken. Not this last national prep, but the one before. And I mean, he's already proven himself time and time again. And when you're that experienced and you've been, and, and w when you're a five-time national champion, two-time world champion and a, and a silver medal, it's a little bit different, right? Like you can kind of get away with other things that people can't. And there's a lot of times when like Russ might overshoot or he might do something and I'm like, guys, you haven't earned that ability to do that and still perform and win. Under, I cannot tell you guys how much pressure he was under last meet and it didn't even bother him at all. Uh, young lifters, it'll, it'll crush them. It'll destroy them. They won't execute. They'll go five for nine. They'll just mess up. You know what I'm saying? Just a different person. So you got to be careful who you watch. You got to understand that circumstances are different. Who is their, who is guiding them, right? Who is guiding them, right? Do they care about them? Are they going to prevent them from failing on meet day? All right, then you get what I'm saying. And, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. There's a lot of other factors, you know, that come into executing, um, on meet day, other than, you know, the type of equipment, right? For some people, it's irrelevant. It's not going to matter. It's really not going to matter. For other people, it's going to be a huge hindrance for them, right? Regardless, you should still get on comp equipment close to the meet so you can kind of see where you're at. You could argue um, that, you know, just to play devil's advocate, well, if you're on kilos and like, you know, that a certain point in the lift is harder for you on kilos and pounds, you want to be on those kilos as much as possible so you can practice, you know, powering through that sticky point. Hell, I could have, it's possible that if I would have done all my lifts on kilos, maybe I get another five keys out of my lift on, on my squats on meat day, right? I do notice, it, I do have to use my legs a little bit more out of the bottom with kilos than I do with pounds. But if the bar is heavy enough, like once I get up in the 700s, 
that it doesn't matter what bar I'm using, it starts to whip and I can really use that momentum, right? So it's just, it's just something that you have to be aware of. It's a lot deeper than the surface. And that's why like from a very, a person who's like, you know, very, this is like a professional thing for me and I'm very in tune and to find details and stuff like that. It's very funny seeing people's like opinions on the internet and when they make comments or they think one lifter is going to win or whatever, but they don't know, they don't know that because of X, Y, Z, it's like, we're looking at two different things. Like I see a different vision. Like I see, I'm, I'm seeing things in a different color than everybody else. Right. Um, it's like, it's like people might see a lifter, you know, lifting on pounds on a deadlift bar and they weigh their 10 pounds heavy and say like, oh man, that person is going to come over and smash. But all those variables, like you put that, you put it in competition, two hour weigh in, have to cut weight, you know, standards and that person's specific technical deficiencies, they're not even going to come close. You know what I'm saying? They're not even going to be in the conversation. That's why it's just kind of like the internet is just funny to me. It's just funny watching it. But anyway, that's another thing. Um, you know, if you're unsure about something, you know, ask your coach and figure out like what, like, what am I supposed to do? What should I be worried about? Do I have, if I don't have access to something, what do I do? Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I hope you guys are able to take something away from this video and the little air compressor thing in the background didn't bother you too much. Um, that being said, uh, let me get a hashtag earn it in the comments down below. Hashtag earn it. Comments down below. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.